This video is for anyone dealing with pre-diabetes, anyone who wants to stay healthy and avoid diabetes, and even for those already living with diabetes. We'll talk about five simple steps to move from diabetes back toward better health. If you've been told you have pre-diabetes, don't panic. It's not diabetes yet. And the good news is, it's reversible. But here's the catch. On average, pre-diabetes turns into type 2 diabetes in just 4 years. Sometimes even faster. So today I'll share 5 simple steps to swing your blood sugar back toward health. And some steps will definitely surprise you. Because it's not about diet. Diabetes is an endocrine disorder where the body struggles to move sugar from the blood into the tissues. Normally, in a healthy person, sugar doesn't just slip into cells on its own. It needs a key, and that key is insulin. Insulin unlocks the gate, letting sugar into your muscles, fat, and organs so they can get this energy they need to grow and function. But with prediabetes or diabetes, things start to break down. Sometimes the body doesn't make enough insulin, so there aren't enough keys. Other times the cells stop responding to insulin. It's like having a key, but the gate is rusted shut and won't open. And in many cases it's a mix of both insulin resistance, that rusty gate, and low insulin levels, not enough keys. Diabetes shows up with a whole range of symptoms. Extreme thirst, frequent urination, dizziness, fatigue, mouth ulcers and skin abscesses, and wounds that heal very, very slowly. But the real damage happens inside. High blood sugar destroys blood vessels. Why? Because sugar is not as sweet as it looks. It's a highly reactive substance. It sticks to proteins, damages tissues and weakens blood vessels. Over time, this destruction leads to serious complications. The blood vessels in the kidneys and feet are among the first to suffer. Blood vessels in the eyes are also at risk. They start to leak, eventually causing blindness. High blood sugar can seriously damage capillaries in the limbs. This can lead to foot ulcers or even gangrene. If the vessels that supply your nerves are damaged, those nerves can die, leading to loss of sensation, leading to problems controlling internal organs or even vision loss. In this picture, you see how people see with diabetic retinopathy. Diabetes doesn't just affect your feet or nerves. The heart is at risk too. When the blood vessels in the heart muscle are damaged, it can lead to serious cardiovascular problems, of course. Most people with Pre-diabetes, don't feel a thing. No extra thirst, no constant bathroom trips, nothing at all. That's why pre-diabetes is usually discovered through a blood test during some usual checkup. It could show itself as a high fasting blood sugar or blood sugar that stays elevated long after eating, high enough to be a warning, but not yet in the full diabetes range. The first blood test is called a fasting glucose blood test. The second one, glucose tolerance test. It's also a good idea to check your glycated hemoglobin or HbA1c. This test shows how long sugar has been in your blood over the past 90 to 100 days and how much it is attached to your hemoglobin. Basically, the longer sugar sticks around in your blood, the higher your HbA1c will be and the higher the risk for complications. A lot of people get diagnosed with prediabetes, but don't panic. In fact, it's your body sending a warning signal that it's time to make some changes. And the best part? You caught it before it was too late, just in time. To catch these important signals from your body, you just need to understand a little bit about how it works 
and that's where I can help. If you want to stay on top of new useful videos, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button to make sure you stay notified for all future releases and give this video a like if you find it helpful. If you've been told you have pre-diabetes, the very first step is losing weight. I know, it's not easy, but it's absolutely possible. Now, if your body mass index is normal and you are not overweight, don't worry, there are other methods to improve your blood sugar. But if you are overweight, studies show that losing just 5 to 10% of your current weight can already improve how your body handles glucose. The sweet spot is around 7%. If you have no idea how to calculate your BMI, you can use a calculator on the link below. It's absolutely free. And also, if you want to support my channel, like link to Patreon and other ways to help the channel, also there, right below the video. That means if you weigh 220 pounds, losing just 15 pounds in a year could make a huge difference. And here's the trick. You don't have to starve yourself or follow some extreme diet. There is a simple way to do this without diet changes at all. To give up alcohol. Research shows that cutting out alcohol, even if you only drink occasionally, can help you lose about 15 pounds a year. And that's not all. Alcohol also harms your pancreas, the organ that makes insulin, and reduces your body's sensitivity to insulin, causing insulin resistance. In other words, it can actually cause diabetes. So, saying goodbye to alcohol is one of the easiest and most effective ways to lower your risk. After you eat, glucose enters your bloodstream. Insulin then distributes it mainly to your muscles and fat tissue. If you don't move after a meal and your muscles don't use any energy, all that extra glucose has no other ways but to go to fat. That's the only way. But if you move even just a little, your muscles start burning glucose right away from the bloodstream. And instead of turning it into fat, it fuels your body. And so movement after eating really helps with weight loss and really helps with decreasing your glucose level in the blood. Now, what if your body doesn't produce enough insulin? or your tissues don't respond well to it. That's the insulin resistance case. Movement helps here too. When muscles are active, they can absorb glucose straight from the blood without insulin being involved at all. Muscles don't need keys for opening the gates to sugar while moving. Movement is a picklock. So one small habit a 10-minute walk after lunch and dinner, less than the length of this video, can make a huge impact. Glucose will leave your blood faster, it won't turn into fat, and your body weight will start to decline. Yes, after a meal, we often just want to sit or lie down and relax. But once you introduce these little walks, you'll notice a big difference. Without them, you feel sluggish and sleepy after a meal. With them, you will feel lighter, more energized and healthier overall. Walk 10 minutes after lunch and 10 minutes after dinner every day. That's 12 minutes a day, which adds up to 150 minutes a week. The exact level of activity that doctors recommend. And this kind of consistency gives you way more health benefits than just hitting the gym for two hours but once a week. And let's be honest, an extra 10 minutes of walking is rather easy. It's not going to stress you out the way an hour-long run might. And you are not likely to reward yourself after that with junk food, sweets or just collapsing on the couch sore and exhausted. Like what happens after an intense workout. Once this becomes your routine, you might even stretch it a little bit. 15 minutes instead of 10. And maybe once a week replace one of those walks for a light jogging. 
But the most important thing is just to start. To start small, but start today. After your next meal, today, step outside and walk for 10 minutes for your blood sugar. But pacing around your apartment or looping the office water cooler, well, it's better than nothing, but walking outside is the best option. Blood sugar processing depends not only on what we eat, but also on when we eat. In the morning, sugar leaves the blood fairly quickly. That's because our tissues have their own internal clock. And in the morning, they are ready to take in and process glucose. But after about 3 p.m., tissue sensitivity to insulin starts to drop, reaching its lowest point at night. And this happens to everyone, not just people with pre-diabetes or diabetes. No, for everyone. That's why shifting your main meals, especially heavy, high-calorie, starchy or sweet ones, to the evening is a bad idea. In the evening, it's better to stick to light foods, leafy vegetables, healthy fats like fish, low-fat cheese maybe, nuts and proteins like chicken, fish or eggs. At night, don't eat at all. Better nothing after 8 or 9 p.m. You simply cannot fool your biological clock. And here's something important. If you work night shifts, even if your diet is perfectly healthy, your risk of diabetes and cardiovascular diseases goes up and your life expectancy goes down. If you've been diagnosed with prediabetes, it's really worth doing everything possible to switch from night shifts to day work. Otherwise, this schedule will harm you or even will kill you. Have you noticed? I haven't said a word about cutting calories or dieting yet. That's on purpose. Everything we've talked about so far isn't directly about food, but these steps are just as important as diet. The truth is, diet alone won't fix prediabetes, even though it definitely matters. If you want me to make a full video on nutrition for prediabetes, let me know in the comments. Just type yes, I wanted this video if you're interested, or no, if you are not. <laughs> Democracy, like it should be. This step follows directly from the previous one. Sleep. If your daily routine is disrupted, say you go to bed at 2 in the morning and keep snacking at night because you feel really hungry, your sugar metabolism suffers. And that's a direct path to diabetes. Poor or insufficient sleep also affects your brain. The very next day, the brain area responsible for making rational decisions works worse. That means it's easier to sleep from your diet, easier to reach for sweets, and harder to control what and how much you eat. You start eating not because you are truly hungry, but to keep yourself awake. And here's an important fact. Just 6.5 hours of sleep a night for 6 weeks increases insulin resistance by 15%. Over several years, that kind of sleep pattern can easily lead to diabetes. So if you have prediabetes, insulin resistance or diabetes, sleep should be one of your top priorities. Get your precious 7.5 or even 8.5 hours every night. That's really very serious. Try not to worry and stay calm. Yeah, I know. You probably want to throw your sleeper at the screen right now. Because let's be honest, advice like that doesn't really work. We can't avoid stress completely. Have you seen the news? Come on. But we can learn how to reduce its impact on us. Unfortunately, stress increases blood sugar and disrupts our healthy eating habits. It ruins everything. First, the more energy and resilience we have, the less stress drags us down. But this energy doesn't just appear out of nowhere. You have to build it. 
as an adult responsible for your own life, you need to make a list of the things that you really enjoy and that recharge you. But it should not contain alcohol or other bad habits. All of them are stressful for the body. You don't feel great after the alcohol party, isn't it? Activities, hobbies, sports, time with your friends or loved ones. Anything that restores your energy and relaxes you. The problem is when the life gets tough, those are the first things we give up. We quit hobbies, stop exercising and see our friends less, telling ourselves we don't have time. But in reality, these are the exact things that help us cope. These are our resources. It's kind of weird, but in stressful periods, we throw away all the things that relieve stress, like hobbies, and keep all the stressful things, like stressful jobs or bad relationships. Think about it. It will be your homework. Second, let's talk about how to handle acute stress acute stress and anxiety at the moment. Here the best trick is to turn stress into movement. Walk, run, jump, wave your arms, punch a pillow or yell. Just don't keep it all bottled up inside. Stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol are released for a reason, to help you fight or flight. If you do neither, the stress response just lingers and over time it actually damages your body. So next time stress hits, don't just sit there, move it out. The second strategy is learning simple relaxation techniques. Try deep belly breathing for 5 to 10 minutes a day. Take a break from the internet and social media and invest that time in building your stress resilience. Trust me, it's one of the best investments you can make. You don't need any difficult breathing patterns. No, just set a timer for 5 minutes. Focus on slowing your breathing so that in 5 minutes you take about 30 deep breaths. Around 5 or 6 breaths per minute. Don't worry if you can't hit it right away, you'll get that gradually. It really works. Research shows that Effects can be comparable to some anti-anxiety medications, but it's free and with no side effects. So, we've put together a simple five-step plan to help you gently and effectively transition to a healthier, happier lifestyle. Right now, you're standing on a threshold. Cross it and you will find their diabetes. Sure, you can live with it but it brings a lot of restrictions. And the older you get, the harder it becomes to manage. But here's the good news. You can step back. You can turn away from the threshold and reclaim your health. The habits that got you to pre-diabetes are definitely outdated and harmful. And a pre-diabetes diagnosis is your body's weight of sending a warning, of a signal. Things can't go on like that anymore. Listen to your body, work with it, and you can banish the shadow of diabetes back to hell. You can do this. Don't give even a single day of your life to disease. Stay with me, take a little steps, but start right now. I'll see you in the next videos.